Hey, what's up? It's Brian Scalabrini, the White Mamba, also 2008 world champion Boston Celtics. Now, you're listening to the Boston Big Three podcast presented by Ride the Wave Media. What's up, everybody? Spike King, Joe Stafford here, live in Indianapolis. Welcome to episode 36 of Boston's Big Three, presented by Ride the Wave Media and sponsored by 1in100.co. 1in100 is the only online raffle website giving fans and experienced seekers the chance to win tickets to live sporting events, concerts, music festivals, and more. Whether it be from your desktop or mobile device, winning tickets to your favorite events has never been so easy and fun. Choose your desired event, purchase a raffle ticket into the draw, and you can be the lucky winner. Unfortunately, there's no tickets right now for NFL because we're here at the Combine. This is kind of like the start of the season. But if you go to Boston Bruins games, Boston Celtics games, we have you covered over there. All right. So, episode 36, Marcus Smart, episode number 36. We are here in Indianapolis, inside the hotel room, <laughs> just making do what we have to. And uh, this is, we have one microphone. <laughs> We're going to be bouncing this back and forth. Babs is in control right here. I got Joe Stafford next to me, and Joe is going to be breaking down the tight ends, wide receivers, and quarterbacks. Later today, we are heading out to Lucas Oil Stadium. We are one of the only selected few that have tickets to be viewing the Combine inside. The fans on the outside are going to get you some inside access, and Stafford in a little bit is going to break all that down for you, the listener at home, of the top prospects of what to look for, as well as what the Patriots' needs are going forward. With that being said, Joe, let's start off today. We wake up. It's all Brady news. And I know we don't have to harp on this. I know you don't want to off, off the show. He's like, I don't want to talk about Brady. Let's just get into this. I mean, you wake up and it's been back and forth nonstop. Is Brady going? Is Brady staying? It's saying that Brady's probably leaving. And guess what? You know what? You have to take this news with some legitimacy. We're at the Combine. All the scouts are here. All the reporters are here. They're all mumbling. They're probably just getting their website clicks the same way we want to get website clicks. But Stafford, what do you think about just the Brady news? You can be quick. We don't have to beat this with the, you know, beat the dead horse or whatever they fucking call it. What do you think going forward? Let me set the scene real quick first. We're at breakfast. We got the scrambled egg buffet going on. Uh, and we sit down, we're on our phones, and we see through the Atlantic that Tom Brady, they would be stunned if he came back to New England. This is all hearsay. I don't care what you say. You don't have any legitimate sources that know Tom Brady is leaving. There is no possible way. Because I don't even think he knows what he's doing yet. Tennessee is out the door. It is being reported that Ryan Tannehill will sign a long-term deal there before the franchise tag deadline ends in a week. I tend to believe that news. Vrabel is in love with the guy. He wants to keep the band together. He'll look to re-sign Derrick Henry next. Brady is focusing on three teams right now. It's New England. It's Vegas. And then it's a mystery team. They keep saying the Giants. Nobody. He's not going to the Giants. Why would he want to go to the Giants? No one wants to go to the Giants. The Chargers are still a possibility. It does not make a lot of fiscal sense for them to sign Tom Brady. Uh, it's up in the air for that third team right now. It's going to come down to three. And Vegas and the Patriots are two of those teams. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think it's funny when we hand off the mic to each yeah. other like that. Yeah. I don't know. It makes me. For those of you who don't know, Bab's on a casting couch right now with about 20 Bud Lattes next to him. Oh, I, have, I have all the Bud Lights right next to me ready to go. For the visual and those who are listening at home, we have like a casting couch here that we have next to each other. Uh, just setting up the visual in a hotel room. If you actually listen to the podcast prior to this, episode 33, episode 35, I'm sorry. I have no idea how you even got through that. That was awful last night. So it's a weird setup. Hey, we're learning. It is what it is. But in terms of the Tom Brady thing, you know, like we've said, it's Vegas. He's going to Vegas. There's no way that he's coming back. Mark Daniels, what did I just, did I, what did I just read to you that Mark Daniels put out that the Patriots are looking to be a rebuild team? The Patriots are not going to go 4-12 and next year. Belichick and Bill we trust. And this is a great way at the Combine to see the future stars of New England. You know that someone in this draft, especially today, when we go see the quarterbacks or tight end or wide receiver, you know one, somebody out there today is going to end up being on the Patriots, especially when it comes to quarterbacks, and we'll get that into a second. Tom Brady news, I think, and I said this to GRD, 
I said this to Tyler, and I said this to you, that I expect some big news to break at some point in the next three days that we're out here. doesn't have to be Brady news, but it probably will be that. He's the first domino for everything else to fall. You've been seeing, uh, and the big thing today when I was going out in, in, uh, early this morning was the Raiders are heavily shopping Derek Carr. Like, they're going to get rid of him. And then they said Rivers might be landing in, in Vegas. They're just doing that, as you said, as a backup to Brady if they don't land Brady. They are going to offer Brady $32, $33 million. Like, they're going to want to get Brady over there, and they can absolutely do it. We'll see what ends up happening uh, in terms of the Brady situation. But if you're a New England fan, New England Patriot fan, look, you still stick with the team. It's not one person that makes the team. How many times has Brady, yes, bailed out the Patriots in certain times? And how much times the defense has bailed out? Tom Brady and the Patriots in that offense. So it's a team sport. Rip the Band-Aid off. I'm saying it right now. You know what's funny, Stafford? And I'm not rooting for Brady to completely leave, but I just can't wait to go back to where that commercial was released at the Super Bowl, and I said that Brady's gone. Like, I don't trust it. And everyone's, nah, he's coming back. Every single day that goes by, if you started 100%, he's coming back, right? And this was uh, February 2nd. You keep knocking 1% off of that every single day that goes by because now it's February. What's today? February 27th. So you've already knocked down, oh, well, he's 100% to probably 75%. Now it's 60%. Now it's going to be 50%. Even a guy like Fitzy, who was 70-30, has changed it to 50-50. So it just shows you that even the fans in in New England kind of know, like, hey, this time's going to come up. Okay, that's it. We'll move on from Tom Brady because I know you want to get into your combine. Uh, All right, this is how we're going to do it. If you like college, you know, college football, you like the breakdown, you like the analytics, this is why I brought Stafford here. This is why he's here. He's going to break it all down for you. Spike King can't do any of that stuff. I'm too too stupid, dude. You know, I got too many Bud Lattes in me. What we're going to do is this. We're going to start off. Tight ends. From 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock today, tight ends will be taking the field. They'll be doing all their drills at Lucas Oil. Stafford, for tight ends... Give us some of the top prospects out there that, as a whole in the league, we should be keeping an eye out for. Because obviously, there's you know the Pats do have that need, and we're gonna get to that way later. But who are some of the guys that you're eyeing for? Who's gonna shoot up? Who might shoot down? Just give us everybody that you uh, have uh, noted on your phone there. To start off, I'm not in love with this tight end class. I have to say right off the bat, I don't think there's a lot of top top top, top tier prospects. I should say, um, not a lot of first round talent. Uh, maybe one guy will sneak in. Don't really. I, I kind of doubt it. I really. If I'm a GM, I'm not taking any of these guys in the first round. Um, top guys that are floating around now. Number one, Notre Dame tight end Cole Komet. Dude's an absolute monster. People, people can always compare tight ends to Gronk. No matter who it is, they always compare him to Gronk. I don't. Uh, it could be an absolute tiny tight end that's athletic with no resemblance to Gronk. Like, oh, it's young Gronk. No, it's not. Cole Komet. Good player, not Gronk. Second round value as of now. Another guy, Jared Pinckney. A guy I'm really rooting for out of uh, Vanderbilt. He's a senior. Great kid. Uh, can block, can catch. He can do a lot of stuff. Uh, third round grade in him right now. That's a little generous. Uh, I could bump his stock up today. We're at the combine for a reason, guys. This is why we're here. It's a report for you guys. It's to see uh, who shoots up and shoots down draft boards. And that, that's exactly why I'm here. Um, those are the only two notable guys I'm looking at right now for tight ends as the top tier guys. But our favorite, Thaddeus Moss, will be working out today and is the number one prospect for tight ends the Patriots are being linked to. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Athletic, physical, although he chose not to bench yesterday, which is very concerning for a scout like me. Um, Thaddeus Moss, keep your eye on him. Running the 40 today. I'm expecting anywhere between 4.7 and 4.8. If he breaks 4-7, his stock is shooting up, maybe even second round. Great breakdown right there. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say about that. Yeah, so, you know, we have the tight ends. That Thaddeus Moss thing, uh, little shout-out to, again, Sam Gordon. I don't think that went through yesterday because I had bad Wi-Fi. But Sam Gordon from Primetime Sports uh, Talk was here, and he was uh, talking about the bench press and how – Thaddeus said it was a personal reasons that he didn't want to do the bench press. I mean, they're going to get rid of the bench press anyways uh, over time here at the Combine. But a lot of these guys, and again, what we've been saying is what's been cool is that a lot of these guys that are top-tier talent are going to do the pro days. It's for these younger guys that 
are the Mr. Irrelevance, but the guys who are in the seventh or sixth round can shoot up the draft boards. It's going to be kind of interesting to see what we'll see later on today. Let's just move on to wide receivers. Wide receivers out there, they're going to be – wide receivers and quarterbacks are kind of going together because they're actually doing some combined drills. That will be going on from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Make sure to check out NFL Network if you want to watch any of this. They've been moving everything into the primetime area over the next couple of days. Um, wide receivers, who do you see out there on your boards? Just off, first off, before we get into this, uh, we'll be doing live analysis at the Combine for these drills, guys. Tune in. We'll be doing live videos, updates, just to inform you guys of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, for receivers, this is the most stacked class since 2014, and it's not even close. Uh, very top-heavy, but the top is stacked, and there's at least 8 to 10 first-round talent guys that are receivers. Probably 6 that will go in the first round, though. Uh, my top guys to watch today, Jerry Judy, uh, generational type receiver, uh, do it all, great route runner. Uh, I compare him a lot to Amari Cooper, but he's more explosive, I think. Um, great hands. Um, and he doesn't really have much to lose at the combine or much to gain. He's still going to go top 10, in my opinion, at the worst top 15. Um, so we'll see where his stock kind of lies today. Uh, C.D. Lamb, I'm calling him Batman because he's going to Gotham. He's going to the Jets. I'm sold. Um, but, you know. A bad pro day, a bad combine could you know, break him down a little bit. There's a lot of receivers gunning for that top position. So we'll see if a bad combine performance today drops him down. I don't think he'll have a bad combine. Kid's lightning quick, uh, and he'll show well in these uh, these drills. Uh, biggest guy to watch today, Henry Ruggs. Uh, we talked about him yesterday on the uh, story. He'd been tied to the Denver Broncos a lot. John Elway loves the guy. A lot of teams are trying to trade over the Broncos to grab this guy. That means they have to get into the top 13 top 14 you know what I mean and that's a big big get for a lot of these teams that are in the mid-20s they're going to have a lot of draft capital a lot of players to try to get up and select this kid so you know he's special the thing I've been hearing about him he keeps saying he's going to break John Ross's 40 record John Ross ran a 4-2-2 if you think Henry Ruggs going to break the 40-yard dash record you're a moron you're an absolute moron. He's fast. He's not that fast. He's getting Tyreek Hill comparisons. That's garbage. He's fast. He's running a 4-3, not running a 4-2-2. Give me a break. Um, that was, I felt bad. I actually like the kid, but he's not going to run a 4-2-2. Um, a guy to watch for the Patriots uh, in this combine is Justin Jefferson. I have a first-round grade in him right now. I'm going to the Packers in my first mock draft at 30. Um, a good combat performance can push him up, but a bad one can push him just as easily as down. Um, in the later mock drafts that we've had uh, coming up to the combine, he's been dropping out of the first round. A lot of guys like T. Higgins rising above him out of Clemson. Um, and Babs just cracked another brew. It's go time, baby. Uh, no, but seriously, uh, Justin Jefferson, a guy to watch for the Patriots. We don't have a second-round pick currently. We do have a lot of compensatory picks, though. Third, fourth round, a lot of package deals, maybe. We're not known to really trade up for those type of guys, but new era, Brady leaves. Might need to put some talent around a new young passer. Keep an open mind. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Good breakdown. I, I have no say. Listen, I have no – you're not going to get anything. You're not getting anything out of Babs. You're not getting anything out of Spike King when it comes to any of this stuff. But maybe for quarterbacks you will. Quarterbacks as well today, all eyes are going to be on Joe Burrow. And even though he's not going to be doing – he didn't do the bench press because of his small hands maybe. Um, he might not do some of the drills today. He's saving everything for his pro day. He's not going to do anything. Is he even going to be there? Is he going to be there today? He's got to be, right? He's going to show up, probably do a couple interviews, say hello to everybody, wave with the small hands. But uh, like you said, Stafford, you've been harping on this. There's one guy that you got to watch out for in terms of Patriots, but in terms of someone that could really elevate his draft stock. And this is what's great because – Let's face it, it's a quarterback-driven league. The quarterbacks make all the money. I mean, Dak Prescott trying to want $40 million. Pat Mahomes is going to break the record whenever he gets signed in an extension with the Kansas City Chiefs. These are your money makers. These are your fran franchise quarterbacks. Who are some of the quarterbacks out there that you're eyeing today and that could turn a franchise around? And just name other franchises out there, too, that might be pick up certain people, maybe kind of give your mock right now of where some of these guys are going, and then tie it in with maybe the Patriots on top of that. First off, Patrick Mahomes is going to break the salary cap in general with his next contract. I don't even know how they're going to pay him. I really, I, There's not enough money in the world to pay that guy. 
Um, when it comes to combine and the quarterbacks, there's a few I want the Patriots to watch specifically. Obviously, Joe Burrow is not participating, though I will note his meeting with the Bengals went exceedingly well. He's pretty much locked in at number one spot. No one really thought there was a chance he wasn't going number one anyway, but the meeting did go well uh, regardless. Um, guys, for the Patriots to watch at the combine, there's a few I have on over here. Jacob Eason, quarterback out of Washington, 6'6", 227. This is the Bill Belichick stereotypical quarterback. He loves those big guys who can throw the ball. Uh, not a great downfield passer. Definitely intermediate West Coast type of offense, but that's maybe something McDaniels wants to experiment with. You know what I mean? We've never, we've never been a downfield passing team. We've never been a just chuck it up and wait for someone to catch a team. We've been a complicated offense of different route runners that have made their money. And Tom Brady's made a career on throwing to those guys. Maybe Easton's the next guy to step into that role. Uh, another guy, Jake Fromm. I've been hearing some some chatter and some really nonsense as saying he's going to the, sneak into the late first round. Uh, I think it's very, very, very premature to say. Uh, his combine is going to depend a lot on his draft stock, uh, or vice versa, I should say. Um, I don't love the kid. I really don't. I don't think he was anything special. He always had a, a dominant running back stable behind him. Uh, gave him an absolute uh, barren secondary to work with. They stacked the box every time. Play action was always there. Um, I'm interested to see if he goes to a team without a running back just to see like what he's going to do. I mean, I, I think the preseason could be disastrous for this kid. Like Giovanni Carmazzi, disastrous. If you don't know who that is, Google it. Great story. Um, another guy, and my personal favorite, Jalen Hurts. Heisman. Uh, finalist uh, out of Oklahoma. This kid got so much right this season. He did had a phenomenal comeback season after being after transferring from Bama. Um, not a prototypical Patriots quarterback. You know, you don't see a lot of mobile quarterbacks on the Patriots roster, if any. Uh, you know, minus Tim Tebow. Uh, bes- <laughs> besides Tebow mania, um, Jalen Hurts is definitely a guy I can see Belichick experimenting with, especially if he starts to drop into that fourth, fifth round category. This is not a guy who's going high rounds. This is not Lamar Jackson. Although he is getting similar questions to Lamar Jackson at the podium as we speak. Will you work out at different positions? And he's saying no. And that's the smartest move you can make. As soon as you crap, as soon as you capitalize, and as soon as you, as soon as you do what the trainers want you to do, you are sacrificing your own draft stock. You are a quarterback at heart. You are not a receiver, you're not a running back. Changing positions in the NFL is terrifying, and it's hard to do. Very few players can do it. Um, Jalen Hurts is going to have a huge day today. Throwing is going to be massive. You need to, you need, you need, you need, I cannot emphasize this enough. You need to perform on the stage today. This is a big day, probably the biggest day for any prospect at the Combine is Jalen Hurts today. Uh, one last guy, Jake Luton out of Oregon State. He's a senior, proven guy, nothing special, not flashy, but... You know, he gets the, work, the job done. We have Sony Michelle. Uh, if we get the offensive line, you know, cooking next season, maybe we have something with him as a late-round guy if Stidham isn't the guy and Brady does leave. Um, but definitely focus on those first three, like I said, Jake Fromm, Jalen Hurts, and Jacob Eason. Like I said, I'm not, like, the college football guy. I don't really watch. I'll watch some of the bowl games, and I think I want to talk more about the Jalen Hurts situation. Um it's just crazy to think he was at Bama and he led that team and then Tua just took over and they really put Saban in a spot where kind of like Brady Garoppolo, like what do you do going forward? And Saban picked Tua to go forward with that team and Hertz took a step back, but Hertz was smart enough to go to, you know, Oklahoma and go still be a top contending quarterback of the of college football. And um that's something interesting. I just want to tie a couple things in with Jalen Hurts is that for in terms of the Patriots. Belichick and Saban have a good relationship, so I'm sure that Saban's fed him some information about Hurts that how he can um, help out the Patriots going forward. The league's changing, as you can tell, with the way the quarterback has been playing. Look at the quarterbacks of the Brady era at the start of the 2000s into the you know the start of 2000s to 2010s and and started transitioning over the last couple of years. I would like to see the Patriots go with you know the Lamar Jackson, the Pat Mahomes type of quarterback, and that Belichick. It's not just Belichick. It's Josh McDaniels, too. I don't think that gets enough like credit or said about because it looks like McDaniels is staying. He didn't grab a coaching job anywhere else. We could be also seeing McDaniels picking his guy. This might not be a Belichick thing. It might be McDaniels picking his guy and more of Belichick doing the coaching for the next four years. Or He wants to beat Shula's record. Like That's got to happen, and I think it's four years. And I think McDaniels is going to be ended up handing over, you know, the keys to the kingdom. And like you said, that Belichick will end up being an executive or whatever. So, and, my, and here's the thing. 
if they don't get Jalen Hurts this draft, because then all of a sudden he has a good combine, his stock goes up, Patriots can't afford that. Maybe they can't make the trade to get him. Maybe they just can't afford whatever the pick it ends up being. Um, at least shows that maybe the Patriots are going to end up going in that sort of direction. No matter what, the quarterbacks this year right now, if you're watching at home today, and we'll again, tomorrow we'll have another podcast. We're going to do one every single day. So we'll review some of the people um, that we saw. And you're a Pats fan, you better be paying attention to quarterbacks because they, they, they might roll with Stidham, but they might not. Like someone from this combine today is going to end up being on the New England Patriots, this roster at some point going forward. Uh, <laughs> your computer scared me right there. I was like, what the hell is going on? I hope we're still recording. We are. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I was just like, edit, uh, it uh, edit it out. Uh, Brendan Watabi can work out his magic over there. But yes, as I was saying, like, uh, it might not be Jalen Hurts. Everybody in their mind, get Trevor Lawrence, you know, get Trevor Lawrence out of your mind. Don't talk about him. The Pats aren't tanking. As it's been said, the Pats aren't rolling over. They're going to continue being a top force uh, in the AFC East. Maybe not the AFC in general, but the AFC East. But, uh, you're getting me excited about Jalen Hurts. Like, I can't wait. I, I'm more for the quarterbacks. I want to see these guys. I really will put all my emphasis in that because we've seen over the years, it's, yes, there's top wide receivers or the tight ends. They might come out of the class and not do anything. They might come into the draft and might not do anything. Um, and sometimes you'll find guys in the later rounds. I was a big – I'll get you in a second. That was a big – a um, couple years ago when I was watching the Combine, I was a big Max Williams guy, tight end. And I saw him, and I was like, dude, I think he's going to be the future. I think he's going to be the future Gronk or the top tight end. And I believe the Ravens end up getting him, and I don't think anything's happened from him. So it, it happens, too, where someone could have a good combine or show off, and they don't end up being anything, too. Um, it's all about the pro days. It's all about what they do there. But still, it's good to start getting familiar with some of these names, start to see that, especially with the Patriots losing most of their staff in terms of players over the next two years, you're going to see a lot of transitioning into the new era of New England. I just want to go back to what you said about the McDaniels, uh, Belichick, and even Saban connection. Um, a lot of people are kind of, like, you know, putting that under the rug a little bit, tucking it away. Don't tuck that away. Saban and Belichick talk all the time. They have a rapport. They, they, they've, they've taken Bama guys in New England before, and it's worked out. Dante Hightower. Um but the main thing is, like you said, McDaniel's going to have a say in this pick, and Belichick's going to let him, especially because it's in the later rounds. Three, four, and five is where he's expected to go, anywhere in that range, depending on today. Um, but Belichick, if it's a first or second round pick, which we don't have a second round pick, but theoretically if we trade it up for one, it's not going to be a quarterback. You guys can stop saying that. No first round quarterback for the Patriots. It's not going to happen. No, I don't. I don't agree with any first round quarterback. Um, and now it makes me even think more about the McDaniel's Belichick thing. Garoppolo was Belichick's guy. Like when he drafted Garoppolo, he drafted him to be the future in New England. And I feel as if a quarterback, because again, Belichick is probably coaching for another four to five years, and then he's more of an executive, and it's going to get passed off to McDaniel's. And I feel like. There is a little resentment from maybe Belichick to Kraft. I mean, it's all, you know, we're speculating no matter what. There's got to be something there where Belichick feels that, damn, I could have had my guy. Right now, Garoppolo would be the starting quarterback. We wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. And I'm uh, if we end up moving on from Brady years prior, it worked out. I mean, you won six Super Bowls. It's, it's, it's awesome to see Brady win that sixth Super Bowl in New England. No one else is ever going to replicate what he did. But it is time to move on. It's time to see the future. It's, uh, it takes years and years for quarterbacks to develop. It's very rare where we'll see like a Mahomes come right into the league like that, sit his first year, which was great because he learned under Alex Smith, then come in as a sophomore and win MVP, which was technically his first year really playing, and then win a Super Bowl the next year. It's very rare to see something like that, and it's something special out of Mahomes. Um, and then even seeing someone like Lamar Jackson just take over the reins too. Um and take over the reins in, in, in Baltimore, and then even going, um, I mean, win MVP, but that didn't work out for him in the playoffs. He's still going to work on that. Comes down to coaching with that. But it's just going to be interesting in general. Uh, I'm really excited for the quarterbacks today. And uh, you have anything else to add on top of that? <laughs> You're going to reach over here. I'm going to close out the show with this. It's a message to all the NFL GMs. 2012, two quarterbacks at the top of the draft, somewhere right now. 
third, fourth round, fifth round quarterbacks. In 2012, the Jaguars took a punter in the third round. Russell Wilson was taken more than 10 picks later. Do not sleep on Jalen Hurts and don't wait to take him because you will regret it for the rest of your career. What, um, I'm going to back and forth here. What, what year was Winston Mariota? That the, 2015. 2015. And they went one and two. And it just goes to show you, too, like, what have they done in the league? Like, whatsoever. Absolutely nothing. Um, and it's crazy to see some of these later round guys, uh, be taken. I mean, look at Mitch Trubisky, how the Bears traded up for that. And that never worked out. And they passed up on Deshaun Watson. Patrick Mahomes. But, yep, we're just going to wrap it up. We'll get one final save from you before we actually close it out. But, again, we're heading out to the Combine today in a couple hours. Uh, Hopefully this is uploaded today. I have no idea what the hell is going to go on. We're going to end up being back every single day. Tomorrow is running backs Friday. We're going to end up talking running backs, and we'll do a review of today's Combine. Make sure to check out Ride the Wave Media on Instagram. Joe Stafford's going to be uploading analysis while he's there talking about the combine. Check out the Spike King on Instagram as well, too. This is Boston's Big Three. Joe, last words heading into the combine. Uh, say a prayer for my guy, Chris Finky. He put up only seven reps on the uh, bench press yesterday, and uh, he's getting bowed in that locker room. I already, I already know. Like He's getting some absolute hate, and if he runs anything more than a 4 six forty, this kid is going to undraft it. You know, we got to do the bench press, too, tomorrow when that goes out there. I, I'll be, that'll be fun. But tuning out here, Spike King, Joe Stafford from Ride the Wave Media. This has been Boston's Big Three presented by Ride the Wave Media, sponsored by 1 in 100. Check you guys out tomorrow.